Hello, this is National Chess Master All Rats. I'm logged in at chess.com to continue my video series on the Nimzovich defense, and I wanted to focus today more on what I call the Fred variation. And it actually should be named uh, after International Master Doug Root. He's the one that blazed a lot of trails with it back in the 1970s and I think into the 1980s. But anyway, the main line of the Fred commences where White declines to play the main line D4 and plays knight f3. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, if you're not prepared to meet an Imzovich, the worst, and and if black is willing to play the Fred, uh, two knight f3 is the worst possible move, possible move black, uh, white can play. And black can just lick his chops. It, this move just is so much trouble in, in blitz. If you're gonna play, if you're a blitz player and wanna play this, you can pick up a lot of points because white has to stop and figure this out. Uh, in tournament games, you really have to be prepared. I've dared to play it. I'm going to show uh, a little bit more of that here in a bit today. Uh, but uh, like I say, I think knight f3, white is admitting, hey, my pants are down. You caught me. I don't know what to do with d4. I don't know how to play this. So I'm just going to play knight f3 and hope you play something I know. Uh, bad choice, white. I'm sticking to that. Uh, okay. Uh, but this is basically the... Uh, position that gets the Fred. And I want to bring up a game or two here, uh, or actually a little more. Let me. This this game here that I'm going to show is actually in progress, and I'm only going to show so much because it's in progress. But I want to show the uh, uh, value of the Fred. Um, yeah, look, see our rats in both games. Okay, White is my video lessons group at Chess.com. Okay, and that's me down on the bottom. I'm playing black. I have my own little group. Uh, I play other groups. If you want to play me, contact me. There is a fee. Let's negotiate. Okay, but I'm doing it against my video lessons group for free. And uh, kind of funny, I had I got kicked out of my own game. <laughs> I think it has to do with the fact that I'm an administrator of both groups. And uh, uh, I had to make a duplicate account, which I'm allowed in order to play these. But I ended up forfeiting this on time. And and in the other game, the original game, they the group had elected to play bishop b5. So we restarted the game. And uh, I guess they voted in to play knight h4. Now, there is some misconception, I think, uh, with people. They think the Fred is busted. I've had several people tell me the Fred is busted. And it's not busted, okay? It absolutely is not busted. And I've said that in my video. People didn't listen. If you play e5, yeah, it's busted. The uh, the trick, uh, here I'll show it to you. It, it's such a fascinating <laughs> gambit. and But unfortunately, uh, you get the queen back. The move that kills um, kills this whole line is, I think it's knight c3 here, and it because it takes away it takes away this queen check. Uh, anyway, make a long story short, uh, and I'm going to show how I discovered this uh, knight c3 line. When I get to the other game, you'll understand what I'm getting there. But oops, went too far. Okay, but. I'd, back in the 90s, I'd already discovered that the knight c3 line or, uh, would cause black a lot of problems, and I devised an, an alternative uh, variation here other than e5, and I, I worked this all on my own. And I'm going to show shortly a game I played played with this back in 1993. Other people have discovered it since, but I'm claiming invention on it because I have a game from 1993 which has never been published, but I also have one from 1995, which has been published. But we'll, we'll see here in a moment. Okay, the move I devised is knight, eight, uh, knight h6. This is my own invention. And I've played countless uh, blitz games with this, as a matter of fact, too. Uh, I don't know about countless. I've played quite a few. Uh, I'll, I'm going to dig into all those later. Let's just get the main ideas here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here comes the check. And, and uh, this is all according to plan, but you see now there's a, a fly in the in the ointment here, and it has to do with the uh, if if white elects to open up the uh, the position with pawn takes because this is just a mistake. Uh, okay, the problem is 
Now the queen, the queen can't take the rook. You see that? The queen can't take the rook. It's guarded by this knight. And the queen can't protect the knight. The queen's under attack and cannot protect, protect the knight. So white's forced to get, his, get whatever pawns he can get for the piece because he's going to lose a piece here. And then I go collect the knight. He grabs a pawn and they, the team grabs another pawn. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway. Um, I'm not going to go into the myriad of variations that are possible, but this is the position where it stands now. Uh, white's in check and white's losing. Okay, uh, White has four pawns for the piece, but white's not long for this world. Uh, the only piece white has developed is, is this queen. Everything else is sitting at home. Uh, the way to win with four pawns against a piece is to have your pawns advanced and and uh, where they, they're stronger than the piece and, and you force one through to a queen. But I'm not going to analyze this position now because this game is in progress, but clearly queen a3 to block the check is out of the, out of the question. So that leaves a king one way or the other. And black has all the open lines. Uh, this bishop can come, uh, can come to pretty much any square on this diagonal. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't don't know why I'm coughing. Okay, excuse me. <coughs> okay, maybe I <coughs> just need a glass of water or something. Well, anyway, back to this. Uh, the knight is free to hop into the game. The uh, the black queen is ready to come into play. Uh, trust me, white's not long for this game. Okay, sorry guys, but uh, the Fred is alive. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, now I'll make them work harder and give me a better game, I hope. Okay, so what I want to do is is switch slightly and move and move forward uh, to 1995. Well, actually, it's not my first uh, game with this variation. There's a 1993 game. I'm gonna I'm gonna show this. Okay, you'll understand when we get there. Okay, now here I actually have white. Uh, let me flip the board. Now this game is published. Okay, it's on the it's on databases, and sometimes they have uh, the black player with a different name. Let me see, they have him with the name of uh, Bozidar Vila Manovic, 2215 from I think Serbia. Well, I'm sorry, it's not him. It's Howard Vihan, somebody I've known for years, and I know because I played him here. And this is uh, this is our game. Uh, and this is, I've mentioned before in some of my videos, I'm not exactly sure where, that I've discovered you can play the Fred diverse, reversed out of an English opening. The only difference being white has a pawn on c4. Okay, and here it comes. And this is another one of my inventions. I've had quite a number of games with this with mixed results. Somebody even played against me on ICC, uh, International Master, I think. <laughs> I, I, I had this played against me. It was a lot of fun. I won it as black because I know what to do against this line. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Anyway, you can see now we get into a, uh, a Fred type reversed position. So, uh, what white can do here is, what white does is plays d4. Now, I had a, a correspondence game going on in the early 90s, at some point, I don't remember where. Uh, I guess Chess Master was already out, and because it's funny, the, the knight to c3 line that busts this uh, uh, variation of the fret on the e5, e5 line uh, was something that I discovered Chess Master was playing when I acquired the program circa 2000-2001. And uh, it would come up with it. So the guy that I played uh, was an older gentleman with a class C rating over the board of 1577, and this guy was wiping everybody out. Masters like myself, Fide Masters, he was just playing perfect games. I realized he was a cheater. Back in, you know, they were che cheating was starting to get into correspondence chess in the mid-90s, so to speak. Uh, it clearly wasn't a problem when, it, when I was playing in its ICCF and its heyday, starting in 86. Uh, the, the best computer on the market was around 1800 in strength, and if somebody wanted to use one of those, they were just asking for it. I don't know when they actually broke Master. Uh, string sometime in the mid 1990s. I don't know, but uh, if knight, okay, he does play knight h5 here, 
Okay, and what I discovered is that E4 doesn't work and you follow the same line as you did before and then black plunks in this knight c6 and stops the, the, the check on e5 which is so critical in a lot of variations and black has a winning game. So I played the um, knight h3 line. So this is a, this was played in uh, 1995. I didn't mention that yet at the National Open in Las Vegas and it was you know, we had to turn a score sheet in, and it was recorded. I remember the commentator said, what about this opening? I thought Jack Young invented all these crazy openings or something like that. And, you know, it's one of my inventions. But uh, I've had a lot of experience with this, both in postal chess and then blitz chess over the years at ICC. But anyway, uh, you'll see the point here. Now, here, uh, what... Uh, what the group was doing against me, and most everybody does, is plays bishop b5, or bishop b4 rather. Okay, and then we, we were similar. But Vihan came up with a very interesting move, and, and I haven't tested it yet against the, uh, in the main line Nimzovich, but he played g6. Now, does, they, does this refute the Fred? I don't know. Or this version of the Fred? Well, I kept an even game. I didn't win. This game's going to end up a draw. Okay, but what's the point of g6? It looks like an odd move. Well, the point is that now the knight on h4 is protected, or knight on h5. In the lines where this pawn goes to g3 and there's an exchange, the queen can run away and the knight's protected. So I recognize that, and I'm winging it, you know. I, I don't didn't really prepare much against this. I'm just winging it. And I kind of played a sloppy game. I'd, I do recall I'd had a severe head cold for about... Uh, solid two weeks and it was still bothering me my nose was still bright red and I didn't play well this particular weekend but I ended up with an even score uh, in five rounds and withdrew but anyway um, we'll just kind of go through the moves here and see just just to get an idea of what can happen here okay and then I went ahead and traded them off the queens off, but I just like I said, I just want to show this this game here uh, and get the record straight as to who actually played it as black, and and to put on record that I'm the inventor of this line until somebody proves it with a uh, an earlier game. Uh, the knight to king rook three approaches or h three or h six is my uh, uh, my little design, and you know look at this, it's such a funny game. White has absolutely nothing developed. <laughs> Black hardly has anything developed himself. You know, strange chess, huh? Okay, so... Trying to break his king pawns open. Kingside pawns open. Grab a little space. I, I played this game pretty quick. I, I, I don't know. I just wasn't in, in the chess mood. But for what it's worth, this is the game. And it made the tournament bulletin, and then it got onto the databases. It's out there. Just sometimes it has the wrong name. Sometimes it has the right name, but this this is the wrong. Uh, this is the correct name here, Vihan. Okay. So anyway, um, just kind of going back and forth here. Not not much is happening. Black has managed to stay a pawn up, but White's got uh, finally got some development here and got a little pressure. And I just come back, and he goes back. And, hey, let's go run our pawns. And it's more just an, an illustration game. There's not, there's really not much happening here. White has no advantage. Uh, so if, if you're playing for a win, uh, or if, if your opponent wants a draw against the Fred, uh, they, this line may get it, but who wants to draw against the Fred? You guys said tell me you want to beat it. I'm telling you the, the Fred is sound, and 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 Black is going to hold his own with it. You know, you're going to draw some games with it, but it doesn't win every time. But if you're careful, you won't lose with it. Hey, check. This game's a lot of fun, huh? Look, look at those pawns <laughs> on the queen side. Okay, I'm down, down upon. Down two pawns on the king side, but one of them's doubled. I'm ahead one pawn on the queen side, but it's doubled. But black can't really make any progress here, so we just kind of danced around a little bit. And I don't remember who offered the draw, but I, I was that was fine with me. So the game ends up in a draw. Anyway, 
um, it can be played with colors reversed. That's the fun part about this, Fred. Okay, um, and I've mentioned that before. So let me bring up my original game with the Fred, this variation of the Fred, played on April 3rd, 1993. Okay, um, this was in the Riverside. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this. Come on. Let's get these pieces back. Let's see. It put a white knight on G8. Oh, gosh. This chess.com interface is so funny. Hopefully, the, let's see if the knight on C3 will show up. I don't know. I'm going to... I don't trust it, too. Let me load this back up and see what happens. Actually, before I do that, let me flip the board and see if that fixes it. Yep. Okay, because I'm black. Okay. Uh, this was the Riverside Club Championship. This was 1993. This is the fifth time that I won it. Uh, and got my name on the revolving perpetual trophy a fifth time. I don't think I think that club's retired. I don't know whatever happened to the trophy. Um, it's named after Charles B. Walker, who was a strong Riverside player back in the heyday, uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, until he passed away. And then the generation of strong chess players that came out of there was just incredible. Grandmaster Larry Christensen being the prime exponent. I won't go into the other names, but anyway, there were quite a few. Uh, very strong uh, title players that came out of there. Okay, so anyway, this is my initial game. I ended up winning this with a six and a half out of seven score. I had to beat a perfect score in the last round, and I got a. I think my performance rating was around twenty-two fifty or twenty-four fifty, and there was one class B player that had gotten in. Everyone else was like twenty sixty and higher. And uh, anyway, here comes here comes the uh, uh, the Fred. And then here I played knight h6. Okay. And I remember somebody sent me a personal message recently at chess.com and said, Hey, what about knight h6 as a defense? I just found that. And I said, I found that 30, 20, 20, or at least 20 years ago and played it. <laughs> here it is. Okay. So now I get my g6 in. And he stops and checks. Now here he plays queen f3. Now this goes into a um, into a uh, new tangent here. Uh, I find the move g5. Now this is over the board. I really haven't sat and done a lot of preparation on this, uh, at least that I can remember. You know, this is 20 years ago. I don't remember all the stuff I looked at. I just knew the the, the basics of it. And now the knight is trapped. Okay, so. Uh, White has to come get creative here, and he can he plays queen d uh, queen c3. Now what's interesting, if you compare this with the game with the uh, uh, with the vote chess group, I could play I could take this, okay, and then he he gobbles pawns in much the same way, uh, but I don't have as much uh, freedom here. The the rook didn't get active. The rook's not down on h4 here. And although I'm still a piece up, and I think this is probably winning for for black, uh, I elected not to go into it. Uh, I just experiment experimenting. I thought I, I studied the position well and thought that I could do well with what I did, and just uh, I'll play this player. Um, I know he's a very good player, but I know I'd beaten him at least the two or three times that I've played him before this, so. I was confident that I could do it again, so I don't elect to uh, to to take that knight. I let him save it. I j I just opt in for development, and I cover the pawn weakness on c6, and now he has the chance to save his knight, and that didn't bother me. Okay, so knight at knight f3, and now I get uh, my bishop out. So, if someone wants to say that the Fred is losing, you know, they're dead wrong. Dead wrong. This this line is is safe and solid. Um, can white play knight takes g5 here? Uh, the point being, the knight is overworked guarding the the uh, the rook and the uh, g5 pawn. Well, let's see, can he? No, because I have well, not as a no, yeah, definitely. I have d5. See the or d4, and knight takes knight on the queen. I I I uh, stop and give a check with the queen, and then pick up his queen. So you got to watch for these tactics. Anyway, um, 
D4. I imagine he saw it. He's uh, he's he's a good player. If 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 it was if it would have worked, he would have played it. Okay. Uh, now since D4 is by me is stopped, and well, he's not attacking H8 anyway. But I but he's attacking G5 a second time. So I uh, I covered that. And now comes H4. Now I don't have. I could let him take. I could just develop and trade off a set of rooks. But I wanted to misplace his knight, if that was possible. Uh, and he f found this square. And one good thing about about this exchange is I get rid of my my backward pawn on the open file. So I don't mind making making this swap. And you shouldn't either if you're going to play this line of the Fred. A lot of times you have to accept a backward pawn on the open file. And many times there will be a capture of a knight on e5 that lets this file close up. Okay, so uh, both sides continue their development. And, you know, for what it's worth, black's got the two bishops. And my pawns are a little funny. I've got a set of double pawns. Uh, but, you know, the game's dynamically about even. And that's what you're looking for is black. You're looking, you're, you have to play to equalize. First, I mean, the Fred gives you the options for white. So many options, opportunities to go wrong, you could win quickly. But, but at the same time, uh, you're giving White a position he's not used to playing. Like, like I say, I could sit and play a main line with this guy and 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 reach a position that's easy to play that he knows he's familiar with, and I'd be lucky to win. You know, uh, case in point, the Sicilian Nidorf. You know, everybody knows that 40 moves deep. How are you going to win a game after 20 moves of theory? Well, the answer is you're not. You're, you're going to have to have weight on a blunder because your opponent's got such a rock-solid position the Grandmasters have already proven is equal. Anyway, uh, that's what I like about these offbeat openings. So bishop g3. And that come up with an interesting move. I'm offering him a pawn, and he can't really take it. I'll get back the e5 pawn, and, and uh, I'm getting rid of my double pawn. So... He, he castled, and then I shove it again. And I guess maybe here he starts going a little astray. But I am I am developing some kind of a potential queenside attack. I'm getting ready to play uh, c5, possibly d4 at the right moment. Uh, I swing my rooks over to the b file, and uh, maybe shove my a pawn, where it's not so clear how... White is going to attack the black king on the king side because the, that position is a little more locked up. Okay, anyway, he plays b3, which creates some weaknesses in his position, but he's trying to get into this c5 square, and I say, go ahead, take it. So this is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing him to do this because it opens up the c-file, and he walks in into potential pins, and pressure on c2 uh, behind all this. So it's really risky for him to take that pawn. So c5 is one of these critical moves that you have to find uh, and be able to come up with and create. Anyway, he plays rook d2 and now I swing my rook over and now I'm able to push this pawn and now my next move is kind of well, it's not kind of funny. It has a point to it. It's a little deflection thing. What am I doing playing on the king side? Well, I'm trying to get this bishop activated. He's stopping me from taking this guy, which I've been tying down. So now it's time to activate this bishop. Okay, so he gets out of there, and I go there anyway. Let's you know, there's no pin, but I can attack his rook and get my bishop in play. And I'm pretty sure white is close to losing now simply because I've I've got threats everywhere the threat is to uh, uh, push this pawn with a pin on the a pin on the knight so he he comes over here and now I just insert queen into the position and you know c2 is now weak there's I'm threatening to uh, chase his queen out, maybe give a check here. Uh, all kinds of nasty threats are coming up, so he goes here. But there's really no defense, and 
there's really no defense and I'm able to uh, just trade into a winning position. He resigned here because he sees that once he retakes, I just uh, uh, pin his piece and win it. And he's going to be down a bishop going into the ending with no hope whatsoever. So uh, these are just some examples of the Fred uh, with the knight knight to king work three. We, I'm using descriptive notation there. Let's go back uh, because simply because it, one could play this with the uh, colors reversed, as I noted. So this is four knight to king rook three line. It would be the fifth move if you're playing uh, playing this as with reversed. But the knight h6 line seems to hold up. I've had people try g4 against me here. Uh, that didn't work. I've had people try bishop e d3. That doesn't work, and they're beyond the scope of this. Uh, there's some. There's a lot to this Fred. Uh, there are other lines that I haven't really gone into at all. Maybe I mentioned them on my promotion or the other one. Uh, D3, D3 really has nothing, nothing wrong, uh, to fear. Knight, Knight C3. You can actually take this into a Ruiz Lopez Schliemann, and we had a vote chess game against the Philippines club. Uh, what is it, Philippines finest or something? And we ended up checkmating them. Whereas black and about 12 moves out of uh, Schliemann because they just misplayed it. And I posted a game. Uh, I beat a master at the North American Open in Las Vegas in 93 uh, with uh, where, where they declined with knight c3. There's other line, other ways to decline this Fred. e5, that just basically gives uh, black no problem. And it, there's some crazy stuff here. Uh, it And I may have mentioned this already. Now you get this interesting fork. And this has all been mentioned in Chess Life back in the 70s. My goodness, it's nothing new under the sun. And this this idea fails. It looks like uh, it looks like black is doing fine here. But uh, the trick is you have this you have this check first. I think it's the check. I can never remember this thing. Uh, it's just one of those things I have a blank spot on. But then you're able to uh, play knight f6 and chase the queen out. You, you end up winning this piece. Uh, but I, anyway, I'll I'll do some work on that later. Uh, black will often, or white will often fall into this trap. And uh, I've won won many games that way. And then I've butchered some where I couldn't remember the analysis and or fi figured it out over the board. You know, it's just one of those things I have a uh, a blank spot about, but but don't play it against me because I'll I'll I will figure it out. Okay, don't think you can sneak one by me. You won't. Okay, I uh, just wanted to show some of these other things. So I can make a ton of videos on this Fred. I want to go more into the uh, main lines too, but at the same time, I want to share this share this Fred and see if I can get get it popular. Uh, as I say. It's a great weapon for you blitz players, okay? Do you dare to play it in tournament games like I do? Well, if you know it well enough, go for it, okay? Uh, I have other friends that I haven't talked to. I need to get a hold of them um, that played this and see what they've come up with and try to uh, get this thing popularized and at least get it named after Doug Root. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take to do that, but until then, it's the Fred, okay? <laughs> so uh, I also want to make, you know, more... More videos on the uh, uh, on the Nimzovich when with the main line. Why you need to play this? This is your best move. Knight f3. You're asking for trouble. Okay. You're you're showing you're showing you don't know what what to do, uh, and then you're going to run into the Fred and get mowed down. But d4. There's many ways to play d4, and I'll, I'll cover more of those in the uh, in future videos. I want to get this series going as best I have time again. I guess it depends on the input and the demand. Uh, I'll try to publicize this a little bit more and and see what uh, people have to say. So thanks so much for your time and, and let me know and there'll be more Nimzoviches coming. The Fred, it lives. <laughs> Take care.